All right, guys, welcome to a, another beer review. Today we've got a Doppelbock. This time we're going to the Kloster and Dex Brauerei. Not exactly too sure where these guys are from um, in Germany, but um, I've seen their beers around. And uh, I initially bought this and the Heller's Doppelbock to do a sort of like head to head video, but I. Uh, just ended up breaking into both of them and um, this one I, I tried to do a review of but it was just not working so I just scrapped it and just drank it and really enjoyed it so um, yeah look out for well I don't know I'll have to pick it up again but um, yeah so looking forward to trying this one I have a few beers tonight because I was supposed to be going on um, Rod J Beer Ventures chat because I've got the apartment to myself and don't really have to do anything tomorrow. But I'm starting to feel a little bit knackered already. And I've just realised how friggin' absurd this this is. I've got stuff in front of me. Just keep rolling, Peter. Um, and yeah, I don't know if I'll be up. Because he's starting at 3 o'clock and it's now 5 to 1 in the morning. So I'll probably just end up being bad to commenting. I don't know. Plus, I don't really have many beers to drink after this one that aren't review beers, and I don't really want to drink too much because I've got a live review with Dean coming up in the next couple of days. So, um, yeah, I've been drinking a little bit too much, and um, I think that's a great way to see that you're not, not an alcoholic is when you can actually look at yourself and go, shit, yeah, you're taking a break after this. So, uh, yeah, anyway, the beer in question. We're looking at the Doppelbock Dunkel, which is clocking in at 7.1%. Best before date is the 20th of the 9th, 2017. So it's yeah, coming close to that date, actually. And uh, yeah, but with a beer like this, I don't think it really matters. And think uh, You could age a lot of the Doppelbocks and it would work in the beer's favour, I suppose. But uh, yeah, lovely artwork, lovely imagery on the front. I love the colour scheme. Very fitting to the style that the beer is. And there is the crown. So without any further ado, let's get this beer opened and see what we get. So this could be, hopefully, a perfect nightcap beer if it's not spilling all over me. That's all I need, a sticky floor. So... Um, yeah, don't know why that's so active. It's been stood still for a while. Oh well, got to wipe that up in a little bit, I suppose. I'm not going to put it on there. I'll put it there for now. Because I might as well just obstruct the camera even more. So, beer in a glass then. And that is a lovely ruby red, but there's very slight oaky tones in there as well. You can definitely see that it has got clarity in there, but the colour's so intense that it is hard to see through it unless you're looking directly at a light source. And, uh, yeah, but just look at that. It's what you want from um, a doppel a doppel dunkel dunkel buck. A doppel buck dunkel. But, uh, yeah, beer poured with just shy of two fingers worth of a nice tan looking head. Looks very creamy, actually. Just looks so rich. And inviting already. The Doppelbox style is just fantastic in my opinion. And of course it's part of the lager family and I'm a big fan and advocate of good lager even though we're led to believe that oh you like lager? Oh and like Witchwood's got that oi lager boy why don't you try some flavour and all that sort of stuff. I mean I like Witchwood don't get me wrong but I don't like this whole oh it's a lager it must be shit mentality. And then you get people who drink them, and they have this mentality, and like, yeah, it's okay, but it's just a lager. I hate that term, it's just a lager. Anyway, get off your high horse, and get this beer smelt, Peter. Smelt? That's not the proper word. Smelt is like, there. Prost. Nose prost. Oh, that's lovely and sweet. You get that lovely spiced cake dough aroma. But the, then you get a really nice sort of like black currant, almost cherry-like aroma as well. Like fruits of the forest. 
if that makes sense. Hint of chocolate in there. Lovely big hit of caramel. And then lovely spice, like the rum cake almost as well. Butterscotch Angel Delight I'm getting in this one. Not picking up any boozy tones on the aroma at all. It just smells so rich and complex already. Very much looking forward to giving this one a taste. Prost. Ooh. Ooh. That's probably one of the, if not the sweetest Doppelbock that I've ever had. But not in that, like, oh, it's just packed full of sugar sort of uh, sweetness. It's a little bit more complex than that. It tastes a hell of a lot like a lovely, sweet, rich, indulgent, like, sticky toffee pudding or something like that. Lovely creamy vanilla flavour in there. A little bit of chocolate. It's that, it's the aftertaste. It's the, the finish on this beer. Where you get this lovely, like, really rich, like, chocolate dough. Or well, chocolate cake, I should say. Toffee, caramel, butterscotch. That is literally a dessert in a glass. And it has some flavour profiles that match um, some of the Imperial Porters that I've had, the ones that have got adjuncts in them. Alcohol masked beautifully, if not dangerously. The only way that you would probably stop drinking this one is it could get a little bit too sickly after a while. It's got a somewhat heavy mouthfeel to it, or heavy body to it, velvety mouthfeel. It's rich, it's indulgent, and like I said, it's considerably sweeter, but more, the excuse me, more along the lines of uh, a cakey sweetness, like a dark, rich cakey sweetness, almost uh, like Black Forest Gatto, but with maybe you've been a little bit naughty and you've uh, poured piping hot caramel on the top of it. Because you still get those berry fruity tones as well, almost like a little bit of plum, as if you've got like a plum compote and mixed it in with rice pudding. Because it's just got that lovely sweet creaminess to it. That is absolutely outstanding. It really, really is. That's like a perfect autumnal, winter, after meal sort of beer. Perfect beer to finish your Christmas meal on, that sort of thing. Have a nice big game dinner. A big slab of meat on the table with all the trimmings. And then, do you know what? I'm not going to have any dessert today, Mum. You slap a hand push her away, say, give me that beer, you take that beer, you drink it, you sit in front of the TV, you get the food sweats, you just literally melt into the chair, and you just embrace the indulgence of a beer like this. Absolutely, it's genuinely amazing. But if you don't really like the sweetness um, in these beers, then you might want to steer clear of it. Go for something like the Celebrator, which is a little bit more drier and um, roastier. I mean, this has got light roasty tones, don't get me wrong, but it, it's like just these dark, rich puddings put into a, a glass of beer, and it's absolutely delightful. It's up there with some of the best Doppelbox that I've ever had, and I don't say that lightly because... I friggin' adore Doppelbox. And it's the examples like this that just make me fall in love with the style 
all over again. And I think I paid just over one euro for a bottle of this. You know, as much as I love stuff like Omnipolo, you can pay like £10 plus for beautiful beers like Anagram, Lorelei, whatever insane, mesmerising Imperial Porter or stout that they have. But for just over a euro of a bottle. And I want that rich, indulgent, cakey, desserty, caramelly, sweet, just mm, beer. Give me one of these. Absolutely wonderful. It, it genuinely, genuinely is. I wanted this as a nightcap, but I'm excited to drink more beers now. Even though I know I shouldn't, and I can't really do that anyway, because I don't have too many beers left that aren't called for for reviews. A little bit of, um, like a gentle char now on the back end as I'm talking. A little bit of like that tobacco char, maybe. This one of those beers where you could just sit there and every sip you'll get something new from it. And again, people go on about lagers and meh, 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 meh. This is just as complex as some of the best craft beers out there. That's a bold statement, I know, but... This just has so much character, so much personality, and it's so indulgent. <clears throat> so it's safe to say that this gets the clueless drinkers meaningless 10 out of 10. I say meaningless because I seem to throw that number out a little bit too often. But when a beer touches me in all the right places, then I've got to count, I've got to count its blessings and propose the beer. I'm, I'm not going to marry a beer. That that would be odd. That would be very odd. But, um, yeah, the thing that strikes me about this also is that it has English language on the back. So I'd imagine this is somewhat easy to export. So uh, check on your import websites, go to your local bottle shop, check out the German section. And uh, if you see a bottle of this, do yourselves a favour pick it up because it's absolutely wonderful so uh, check out my Doppelbot playlist for examples of a truly beautiful style of beer check out the Kloster Brauerei uh, Andex down below and uh, yeah if anybody else has reviewed this one as always their links will be included in the description box also thank you guys for watching and I shall hopefully see you all later cheers